step back, withdraw your troops, respect Ukraine's sovereignty or face severe economic sanctions. This, by and large, is the world's message to Russia. Moscow's actions have divided the world into three clear parts. One side supports Ukraine and slams Russia. The second side supports Russia and slams the West. And the third does not want to pick a side. The most vocal reactions were from Kiev's Western allies. They said Russia has violated Ukraine's territorial integrity. Then we have Russian allies and former Soviet republics. They say the West left Moscow with no choice and that Putin's declaration was long overdue. Also reacting with the global markets. Oil prices surged, stock markets tanked before recovering a bit. Where is all of this headed? In the next few minutes, we'll bring you the global response and plan of action if there is one. Starting with the condemnation, Ukraine's allies are furious, they're threatening a retaliation. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations said, Putin sending so-called peacekeepers to Donbass is quote-unquote nonsense. Tomorrow, the United States will impose sanctions on Russia for this clear violation of international law and Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We can, will, and must stand united in our calls for Russia to withdraw its forces, return to the diplomatic table, and work toward peace. Thank you. The U.S. is imposing sanctions. So is the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he will immediately institute a package of economic sanctions that will apparently hit Russia very hard. Exact words spoken. We will immediately institute a package of economic sanctions which I think is people would expect, targeted not just at entities in, uh, in Donbass, in Lugansk and, and Donetsk, but uh, in Russia itself, targeting uh, Russian uh, economic interests as hard as we can. Uh, and uh, we, will, we will be, they will hit Russia very hard. And there is a lot more that we are uh, going to do in the event of an invasion. France, meanwhile, is still pressing for a diplomatic settlement. It has not ruled out the possibility of sanctions, though. This is what they said. In the coming days, we will examine an exchange with my European finance counterparts on how to protect European economies and the French economy in the face of the consequences of the escalation in the Ukraine situation. We are currently studying different decisions that can be taken. Germany has gone a step ahead. Sanctions plus the suspension of Nord Stream 2. It's the $11 billion gas pipeline between Russia and Germany. Also a major point of contention, remember. The U.S. says this pipeline increases European dependence on Russia. Now Germany has put it on hold. This is what Chancellor Olaf Scholz said. This may sound technical, but it's a necessary step under the administrative law so that no certification of the pipeline can now take place. And without this certification, Nord Stream 2 cannot go into operation. These are the NATO member states, all talking about sanctions. What about the rest of the world? So far, only three countries have taken a clear stand. South Korea, Japan and Australia, all three American allies, all backing sanctions. At the same time, also advocating dialogue. Sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine must be respected. We must actively seek a peaceful solution through dialogue. With regards to this situation, our country has grave concerns and will monitor carefully. We will coordinate and work with the G7 and the international community to respond, including sanctions. The moment that, uh, that other countries um, put in place strong and severe sanctions uh, on Russia, we will be in lockstep with them and we will be moving just as quickly and that's what their discussions that we've been engaged with now for some time with our partners. This was the pro-Ukraine camp. Now let's talk about Russian allies. The Serbian president, for one, has refused to side with NATO. He says it's a difficult situation, that on the one hand, he supports the integrity of Ukraine, but he cannot ignore the fact that 85% of Ukrainians will be on Russia's side. We do not know where he got that figure, but this is what he said. Daniel Ortega, the president of Nicaragua, says, He's facing a similar dilemma. He favors Russia's decision to integrate Donetsk and Luhansk and that if a referendum were to be held there, most people, in his opinion, would vote in favor of Russia. Then we have China, one of Russia's closest allies. The U.S. Secretary of State said he'd spoken to the Chinese leadership to secure the sovereignty of Ukraine. Well, you heard that right. America is listing China's help to secure the sovereignty of a country. 
Not surprisingly, the Chinese ambassador at the United Nations Security Council did not criticize Russia. He said the current situation is, and I'm quoting, a result of many complex factors. The current situation in Ukraine is a result of many complex factors. China always makes its own position according to the merits of the matter itself. We believe that all countries should solve international disputes by peaceful means in line with the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. Meanwhile, the global markets were a sea of red, especially hit was Europe. London's ben benchmark index shed 1.2% to over 7,000 points. In the Eurozone, Frankfurt's DAX fell 2% and the Paris CAC also retreated 1.8%. In India, Sensex fell more than 380 points. The Nifty shed 114 points, as did several other sectoral indices. Oil prices have also been hit. On Tuesday morning, the price of Brent crude reached $99 per barrel, the highest mark since September 2014. The spike has primarily been driven by fears of a supply chain disruption. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.